RTU arrived at St. Columbus College at 9 o'clock to take several scenes for their autumn production of The Car in Corborn Lane. Alan Robinson was directing and there was much to be done as the makeup prepared actors for the first scene in the sitting room. The camera was magnificent. Alan told us that it cost more than £40,000. It was nearly as expensive as our own handycam. Our very own Danielle McCormick was with the crew during the whole day, hoping to pick up some handy tips from these very competent professionals. We were all amazed how very friendly everyone was, and they didn't mind spending their valuable time explaining everything to us. The sitting room, which is very bare, was fitted with lights, cameras, then miraculously transformed into a doctor's waiting room. It was amazing to watch the professional actors and actresses preparing themselves for a scene. We couldn't help wondering how the team managed to recreate the appearance of the 1930s so quickly and effortlessly. The actors spent time discussing and contemplating their roles as the makeup people carried on relentlessly with their painstaking tasks of powdering and painting the faces of each of the characters. The shooting begins. It must run exactly 26 seconds and does so every time. Even so, small problems arise, like a door that's too shiny. But professionals are at hand to give any door a facelift. The director, Alan Robinson, was not a cigar-puffing dictator, but a quiet and relaxed person, gently guiding all those in the production team to achieve excellence in their own particular way, never pushing his ideas, but always there for whoever needed him. Sound was taken on a boom mic, separately from the videoing itself, whilst the picture was constantly monitored on a small screen by the director. One of the most complicated aspects in video filmmaking for amateur groups like ourselves at St. Columbus College is continuity. The professionals take this in their stride. Every item in every scene is noted and kept on record. Although the behind the scene events seem to be haphazard and uncoordinated, everyone is ready on time and the scene just rolls into action. The lighting was used to great effect, turning the warden's large drawing room into a much smaller and bare-looking waiting room. The scene in this room clearly showed just how important lighting is and the extent to which it can affect even a simple scene such as this. Alan seemed to be satisfied with this scene and decided to move quickly on to the next. Makeup were already preparing the cast for the coffee shop scene which was being taken outside to Braddon. One of the skills of props is their ability to completely alter the look of a place by making just a few subtle changes. This was very evident in the scene outside to Braddon. A few chairs, a tablecloth and some silverware turn this prosaic building into a beautiful period coffee shop. Ross Black Mackin Peter LaFroy, Andrew Arnott and Toby Couchman were making their debut as extras. They were all very confident in their cameo roles. The scene went well and no retakes were necessary here. Well done boys! While this was being filmed beside the croquet lawn, the grips were already preparing for the cloister scene. But what were they building? Yes, you've got it. It's a rail for a crane. No time is being lost, however, as the cameramen and continuity plan their next shot. The distance of the camera from the scene of action apparently does not have any significance. The zoom on this professional camera and the quality of the lens mean that the depth of the shot will never be affected by its relative distance. 
At last, the crane is ready, and the camera is mounted on its stand. Alan gives the cameraman some last-minute instructions before taking this final scene. Go on, admit it. How many of you would love to be on that crane? We enjoyed having all the RTE team with us at St. Columbus College and we hope that they will come again soon to visit us and work at the school. We learned so much from them in just one day's filming. We wish Alan and his team all the best with this film and are all looking forward to seeing the finished production on RTE this fall.